So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to get started with Dave Cooper tonight. So, Dave, now's a good chance to turn on your microphones. So, Dave Cooper is the president of the Canadian Berkey. So, why don't we get started with just the first and most important question. Dave, who are you and what is the Berkey? Well, I'm the president, have been for several years. Um, since 1985, we've run the uh, Canadian edition of the Berkey. Uh, there are two others in the world, of course, so one in Norway, the original, and one in the, in the States, in Wisconsin. It's a multiple distance event, with the longest being 55 kilometers with pack, and the shortest is for kids at 500 meters. Uh, we've been, um, we've had a lot of success with this event. We often get over 2,000 people going to it, and more in the last 10 years is more like 1,200, 1,500. Depends on the weather. It depends on a lot of things. But uh, this year, this year is a bit of a challenge. So we can talk about that. Okay. Well, why don't you let us know what people need to know about the 2024 Berkey? What's going on? Well, um, preparations began in the fall. Of course, it's a complex point-to-point uh, -point event. It's run in ba basically a wilderness area, although it's near Edmonton, but it is a, in a provincial recreation area adjacent to Elk Island National Park. So it's quite it's quite remote in a lot of ways. Um, we have access points for emergencies and whatnot, and for and for uh, getting people in and out um, a few areas. Um, the uh, participant and volunteer safety is is important. We have a uh, actually a world class uh, uh, safety and rescue system set up in the last two years. Uh, we've had uh, some pretty good success with getting people out who have problems. Um, the event requires a lot of snow. Uh, not only the trail snow, but the snow for the start and finish areas. Um, I, it's I didn't realize how much snow is required for the for the start area, but apparently they scraped the whole parking lot up of the Ukrainian uh, village, um, and the parking lot is all grass. Uh, this year, it's uh, it's a bit of a challenge. So they have to move thousands of cubic meters of snow just to get the start and then also the finish area. Uh, in preparation. So anyway, Dan uh, Dan can talk more about this. He's the uh, chief of course. He's the next guest. Um, but other than that, we're in good shape. We have um, all the volunteers uh, organized. We have all our equipment on order. It's all ready to go. We are 100% ready to go, except, okay. except for the snow. And the snow is a real, real big worry. So... So how will the decision be made whether or not the Berkey goes ahead? Well, it's up to the board. Uh, we're looking out uh, probably from a couple of weeks from today, we'll sort of have a pretty good idea if we we can go or not go. Depends on the forecast. It also depends on input from Alberta Parks because they do, they do the trail work and they have their uh, ability, they have, they have their restrictions about how many days they need to do the various uh, preparations. Uh, Nordic Alberta, Nordic Canada, they have um, requirements um, for safety and whatnot in trail condition. Um, and they're a sanctioning body, of course, and also on insurance. So uh, we have to be concerned about the safety of the skiers if the trails are not properly done. And at this moment, as, as Dan will probably tell you, they, they, what they have done is they've rolled the five or six centimeters of snow they've got. So there's a rolled, rolled trail in, in certain areas and that's it. There's no tracking. And uh, we're eagerly watching the snow forecasts to hopefully get some of the snow that's going to Calgary tonight, which is 20 centimeters. We're not gonna get that apparently. So very frustrating. Okay. Well, before we switch over to Dan, Dave, we gotta ask, have you been out there skiing? No, I haven't been skiing. Where am I gonna go skiing? I wanna go skiing <laughs> at Waskahegan. Uh, even Strathcona is not ski. You can skate ski at, at Strathcona, but I haven't got skate skis. I'm a I'm a traditional skier, so you know. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, Dave, thank you so much. We're going to swap over to Dan Lescou, who is our chief of course. Hi, Dan. Are you all uh, unmuted? Yes, I believe so. Oh, fabulous. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Good. So, Dan, if you wouldn't mind, just introduce yourself and let us know what exactly is the chief of course. Okay, well, this is my second year as chief of course. I'm a retired uh, high school science teacher. And when I retired a few years ago, I wanted to do something outside. So I volunteered with the Berkey and got on with the trail crew. 
uh, which we do fall work uh, to get the trails in shape for the grooming. And then that's just evolved over time to, to assuming the, the role of chief of course. The, the chief of course is basically ensuring that we have a safe course for the event. And so that's everything from start to finish and everything in between. Excellent. So as of right now, January 16th, can you give us a little bit more insight into how the course is looking from like from a condition standpoint? Um, basically, everything in terms of fall work was fantastic. We had eight days. Uh, the, um, there's been considerable work done by parks to widen the, the course. Um, trees have been removed, brushing has been done. It's in fantastic shape. It's just unfortunately in dire need of a hell of a lot of snow. Do we actually know exactly how much snow is needed, like the minimum no amount of snow needed for a Berkey to go up? It's really hard to say because that's got to be deposited in all the right areas. So you need to have, uh, you know, enough snow so that in the areas that have got tree covering, um, there's adequate snow so that, you know, uh, you're not going to bottom out on the on the groomer um, and bring up dirt or that a skier isn't going to hit dirt because that's just like hitting sandpaper um, that they're going to stop immediately. So it, it you know, it really depends. Uh, we've got to take a look at the, the lowest snow, lowest spots where snow accumulates to, to know whether we have an adequate amount that we can either move into that area to make it groomable or that it's groomable as is. Okay. And, and Dave sort of touched on, but just can you elaborate on, because it's not just the snow needed for the trail and maybe the start and finish, where else is snow needed in order to make the Berkey safe and successful? Um, the start area, if anybody skied it before or has, you know, seen a picture of it, it starts um, on the in Ukrainian village, but then enters onto Goose Lake. And that whole area, that transition as you move on the along shore onto the lake, that needs to be uh, contoured and flattened out. And that's where there's a lot of snow needed. The same thing happens at the finish. Um, when anytime you're you're moving from an area where you're moving from trail to lake, back to trail, that's going to require a lot of snow to get that grade appropriate and to make sure it flattens out. Right now, even though we've had snow fall on the course, it's not enough to fill in the holes. Normally our, our you know, our trails have got contours to them. Um, what you want for cross-country skiing is that all those holes fill in and when the groomer goes, it makes it nice and flat. And then you can lay your trails down. Right now we've got extremely bumpy trails. Okay, and so right now the the go or no go decision is that simply just about a snow issue? It totally is. It's it's about the quantity of snow and the ability to groom. They tried to groom last week, and they were getting to the part part where the pads, the pads for the uh, for the classic, were hitting uh, the dirt. So there wasn't enough snow even when it compacted because of the quality of the snow that we had. So, for example, on Nordic Pulse, it's showing that the trail is groomed, but does that that doesn't quite mean it's 100% ready, correct? Um, there's a section that was groomed, but that's only uh, that's on Neon Lake, which is in the last kilometer of the course. And um, people that have skied the course before know that if you're skiing the shorter courses, the 31 or the 13, you cut across Neon Lake. And what the groomer was able to do was get enough snow in there by scraping some and using the accumulated snow to lay down sort of a loop around Neon Lake that's classic. But as you see on Nordic Pulse, he said the, tr the trail from the parking lot to Neon Lake is unskiable. Gotcha. And that's where they tried to flatten it. And everyone knows, well, that's the finishing. And, and that's actually, again, rolly and contoury, and it just hasn't flattened out. It doesn't have enough snow to be flattened out. Okay. Is there possibilities of either making artificial snow, like at a ski hill, or trucking snow in? Um, over 55 kilometers and into the bush. The problem is remote. Um, gotcha. Is that we don't have that ability. There's there's discussion about, you know, you can snow farm and take off of lakes that are within the park, but then even there, you have to judge the quality of the ice to make sure you can get your equipment onto it. And then also you're accessing in and onto the lake with equipment is not always easy. So sometimes that requires cutting trees, also making ramps, which involves snow. It's a huge effort to even snow farm. Okay. And 
is there possibilities of just moving the Berkey to somewhere that has had enough snow, or is that just not a possibility at all? <laughs> right now in Edmonton, in this area, uh, the, you're just not finding any classic track um, unless it's at Gold Bar where they have been making man-made snow, and, and there they don't even have the woodcutter's loop. They just have the loop around the lake and a little bit up at 50th Street. So basically about two-thirds of Gold Bar has only been... Uh, has adequate snow. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, at this point, we want to see if anybody has any questions. They want to put any questions in the chat while people are typing those up. We just have to ask. Besides band practice, can you tell us a little bit about your skiing this year? Have you been out there? <laughs> I've been doing a lot of uh, skate skiing. I, I do skate ski, and I've been out at Strathcona Wilderness quite a bit. In fact, last Monday, I had a great discussion with the groomer as he was out there working and doing a lot of snow farming and bringing snow off of the lake to try and get their uh, their trails shored up. Um, you know, they've only just recently been able to get the piston bully, the really aggressive groomer out. Um, and that's what makes quality tracks. So everybody's very, very behind and, and, and needing snow. So I've been skiing as much as I can. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, I'm just going to double check our chat to see if we have any questions out there. All right. Well, it looks like you have done a great job. Nobody's nobody's poking the bear just yet. I want to remind everybody that if they do need more information about what's going on, the CanadianBerkey.com is available. Uh, Dan, we hope you can stick around for a little bit longer just in case some questions do pop up. I know you do have a, a hard exit. For now, we are going to be moving on to our marketing director slash our chief of the virtual Berkey. So Delia Mainhorst, if you've got your, uh, let me know when your mic is off uh, on this, sorry this? yes <laughs> there we go good we can hear you fabulous okay so i guess the big question is one who are you and two what is the virtual berkey uh i'm delia minorst and uh, the virtual berkey is um an event um where everybody can participate with the same distances as our berkey saturday and barna berkey um so we have seven distances to uh, four kilometers, uh, seven kilometers, 13 kilometers, 31 kilometers, and 55 kilometer, and the 55 kilometer wet pack. So you can do that with the virtual Berkey um, in every province, uh, in every city, uh, because you can do it at your own pace, at your own place. Uh, so that is what you can do, but you can also choose if there's no snow in your place then you can uh, walk bicycle or cycle or uh, ski jour whatever um, is your favorite spot sport and it gives a great opportunity to um, practice for the Berkey um, next year if you want to participate ever because we also have a contest um, that allows you to buy uh, a ticket, uh, or you can win a ticket for next year. Okay, and we've had a uh, we've had a Georgie join us and give us a little wave. Uh, do we do we know? Uh, we hear Georgie is your a partner working with you on this. Yes. <laughs> um, well, maybe uh, Georgie. Um, well, Georgie is um, uh, following us uh, on social media, so I know a little bit uh, about her. I don't know if she knows a lot about us, but she. Uh, participated, I think, uh, a few times already in the Berkey and um, also in the virtual Berkey. Um, and, well, maybe um, she wants to join in the virtual Berkey this year. Gotcha. Yes, and so I'm, I'm hoping to ski in the in-person Berkey, but if it has to go virtual, then we will just bring all the enthusiasm to the virtual Berkey. <laughs> And it sounds like that one of the nice things about the virtual Berkey is it's not restricted to the metro Edmonton area. It sounds like it's for everyone. Uh, yes, indeed. So you can. Uh, so um, I believe uh, uh, Georgie is based uh, down south, uh, so she can join in uh, from uh, that area. Um, but also, we had people in the past in the uh, past virtual Berkeys from the U.S., uh, from the U.K., from the Netherlands, Sweden, even. So uh, a participant uh, joined uh, for skating um, from Sweden on the lakes there. So we get really nice pictures in uh, with the virtual Berkey to see how everybody engages with this uh, 
Nordic ID. Excellent. And a question for the virtual Berkey, will these results be used for LOPIT rankings? Are they official results? Unfortunately, uh, they will not uh, count for um, any ranking, so you cannot uh, use it to go to uh, the Norwegian Berkey, uh, but you do get a certificate so uh, that you participated in the virtual Berkey with your time and uh, which activity you did. Um, but um, yes, uh, we are not on the location, uh, so we cannot time it. Um, it's not sanctioned, so it is pure for your goal and satisfaction that you will get that certificate and can be proud on yourself that you achieved this. Excellent. And so with these images, with these pictures people are taking, all these beautiful photographs of people participating in the virtual Berkey, where can they post these images? Uh, these, these images can be posted on our social media, so we have a special uh, Facebook group. Um, there we uh, also have all the participants from previous years. Um, on Instagram, people can share it with uh, certain hashtags so that we can pick them up. And also there is an uh, email box uh, available, so you, uh, people that are not on social media can send it uh, to that email address uh, and then we will uh, share it. So if you want to uh, participate in the contest, then um, yeah, your photos will be shared. Excellent. And maybe, uh, so I already told you that um, there is a contest um, and that you can win uh, a certain amount of money to spend on next year, uh, 2025 Berkey. Uh, but I also can uh, reveal a scoop here that we will, uh, that we can give away uh, a weekend um, in, to uh, down south. So that is a real scoop. So, um, yeah, please uh, participate and you can have a chance to win uh, a weekend away. Excellent. And did you, are you able to elaborate a little bit more on how people can win those contests? Uh, so that is with the photo sharing and we have uh, two competitions. Uh, so you can dress up as a Viking uh, and do the virtual Berkey, but also, um, yeah, just show us where where you do the virtual Berkey. Uh, take us on your uh, trip and uh, show that you have participated in the 31K or in the 7K or the 2K even. It's uh, really, um, yeah, nice for us to see that. Excellent. And are people doing this by themselves in teams with organizations? What What is the Good, first uh, Excellent question. So um, they can participate with a team. Um, that is also the difference. Uh, well, there is a lot of differences with the uh, Berkey Saturday event, but um, I think it's special that people can also participate with a team. Uh, that can be a team of friends, that can be a team of colleagues, whatever uh, you think of or what, uh, where, uh, what you would like to share, uh, with whom you would like to share your virtual Berkey. So uh, people have uh, shared it with uh, across Canada, with family, for example, and they pick the same day and everybody uh, does a, a ski in their area. So And that is then a family team or a book club team or a ski club. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, possibilities. And just going into the virtual Berkey, what are some rules people should be aware of? The rules? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't have many rules. We do ask when people uh, register to sign um, uh, a waiver or terms and conditions. Uh, so people um, that are younger than 18 years, um, well, their, their uh, parents need to sign uh, for the waiver, um, and the, the waiver is to make you aware of, well, things that can happen so that you don't go out in the cold, etc. cetera. So um, it's nothing to worry about, but um, yeah, you will need to sign the waiver and uh, read it through. Excellent, and a lot of that information is on the website, I assume. 
The, the waiver is uh, only in a uh, race roster. So uh, our website explains the contest and all the information about um, the virtual Berkey. But when you uh, press the red button to register, you will end up on the race roster site. And there you can pick your distance, your activity as well. Um, if uh, and then you go through the registration process and you need to sign your uh, terms and conditions. Excellent. The terms and conditions. So as everything starts to get a little bit closer, what are some important dates people should prepare for or be aware of? Important, sorry? Dates? Important dates. Dates. Oh, yes. The, when the virtual Berkey is. Uh, well, the virtual Berkey can be done uh, between February 12th uh, and they can sign up until the 24th. Um, results can be submitted until the 26th. So then, uh, yeah, we need to have your results in uh, and also your contest pictures need to be shared by them. So and then after the 26th, we will make a selections uh, selection of the beautiful pictures. Excellent. Is there any more about the virtual Berkey that we should know about? Um, no, no. Are there any questions? Okay. Well, listen, while people are typing up their questions, the big question I've been asking everybody is, are you out there skiing right now? Uh, yes, I have um, enjoyed uh, skiing. I have been uh, to Lake Louise and I have been skiing here on the lakes uh, and also uh, at Gold Bar. Um, so yeah, that has been a uh, little bit amazing, not as a normal year, but it's better than nothing. Okay, and it looks like we do have a question for you. The question is, do we know where the virtual prize weekend away to is? is has it been announced? Where where, where are they going? It is uh, uh, Castle Mountain Chalet. So this is a sponsor that has been uh, with the virtual Berkey for uh, a few years. Um, so that um, they, uh, we were very happy that they signed up uh, to support us again this year. Oh, and we're very you. happy to give it away because it's a beautiful spot. Excellent. Okay, well, we do still have some time for more questions that want to come in. But in the meantime, we want to just give a quick shout out to some people who have joined this chat. Uh, we also have uh, Monica, who is our volunteer coordinator extraordinaire. Monica, would you mind introducing yourself and just letting us know a little bit about what you do? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good evening. Hi. Um, yes, I'm uh, Monica Wartenberg, and I've been with the uh, Canadian Berkebiner for about five years now, and just uh, loving every minute of it. Um, today, Roberta and I were out putting the banners on the bridge decks, and uh, the one that we were at was uh, also was the white mud, and there, what made our day was there was a, is a honk when the, the banner went up. So... I don't know if anyone's heard a honk when the banner goes up. So they're honking that, yay, Berkey, the snow is out there. And like Dave said, you know, we've got the volunteers. It's just everything is looking so awesome. We are ready to go. Um, the this, this snow is coming. Every day we get a little bit more. And we're just uh, doing the snow dance to make it happen. We so want it to happen. And everybody's worked so hard to get to this point. So, um we're, you know, we could always use a few more volunteers to help us out at the kitchen in the uh, festival tent. You can never have too many volunteers there, um, but pretty much we're so good. So excellent. That's about it. Thank you so much. All right, folks. Well, we managed to fly through that pretty quick. So at this point, we are going to open up the floor. If there's any questions for any of our speakers, uh, specifically, Jim, if you could tell us a little bit more about the U.S. Berkey, we'd love to hear what's going on down with you guys. But at this point, we will open the floor and allow for some questions. Uh, if you could put a hand up just to let us know that you're going to ask the question. That way we know to turn our focus to you. All right. Anybody have any questions? Now is the time. Excellent. Okay. There's Jim. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. I don't know a whole lot about what's going on in Berkey right now, but I have been skiing in that area quite a bit uh, this year. There's not much snow. Uh, they've got a base up there right now that will be good if we get quite a bit of snow on top of it. But there's very little in the forecast. They were supposed to get about a foot last week, and it, it missed them. 
completely. <clears throat> and it's pretty like that over the whole Midwest right now. Uh, this weekend, there are probably five races on tap around here. They're all canceled because we have no snow. Uh, and I'm skiing on artificial snow right now. I've skied 500K this year on a 2K loop of artificial snow. And that's been it. <laughs> it's been a tough year. Uh, so they're coming up with contingency plans for the Berkey, and we're just all hoping it snows. That that will save the day if it does. Uh, they're just like you. They're ready to go. They're they're very well organized, but we need snow. But, all right, yeah. folks. Well, it sounds like this. We hopefully that was very informative for everybody. Hopefully, everybody got some answers for what's going on. Uh, I do want to thank. Uh, Dave, Delia, and Dan, the three Ds of making Berkey TV so successful. Of course, I want to thank Frank Potter, working the tech and the uh, behind the scenes. Oh, Roberta, you're back. Did you want to come say hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm just at the gym and uh, my phone cut out for some reason. Um, yeah, you know, if we have a minute, I'd love to talk about the Barney Berkey. Yes, of course. Okay. It's just a family fun event. Okay, that Jim wants her to get back to her workout, I think. <laughs> uh, well, so we will uh, bring the we'll bring this session to a close. If you do have any questions that didn't get answered, if something comes pops into your brain later, do not hesitate to email the Berkey, send them a message, reach out on social media. The Berkey is a go if there is snow. So everybody get out there. Start shouting at the sky. Make that snow happen. We, uh, we're, we're all pulling for you here in Vancouver. We'll send you all the snow we have. It won't help, but we'll send it. Don't worry. All right, folks, thank you so much for Berkey TV. Dave, would you like to send us off with any of your final presidential thoughts? Let's do a snow dance. Yes. Everybody get out and do the snow dance. That could be the, your next virtual Berkey activity is a, a quick snow dance. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. So thank you so much, everyone, for your hard work, and we hopefully we will see you on the trail on some skis. Hmm. With the full moon or the With morning? The full moon. <laughs> yeah, even the full moon, yeah. Okay. Stay hey. warm and have a great hey. evening, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good